Let's move on to writing the next test for a view component. In this case, it will be a base button component responsible for rendering all the icons in the application. And all the icons that are used in this application are contained within icons object. But firstly, let's open up base icon component and take a look at its implementation. As we can see, this component receives one prop called name. This way we're specifying which icon this component should render. And the way it does it is it uses dynamic component and based on the past prop name, it is going to extract particular icon component from the icons object and render it by using this dynamic component right here. And now let's check where this icons object comes from. If we'll open up icons.ts, here we see that we are importing a bunch of view components each of which responsible for rendering particular icon. And then all these icon view components are gathered in this icons object, where every key is an icon name, and every value for the key corresponds to a particular view component. And that is why we are able to use this icons object right here and extract certain view component responsible for a particular icon by its name. So let's start writing test for base icon component. I'm going to duplicate base button test, rename it on base icon, remove from here everything. I'm gonna leave only skeleton for the first testing scenario. And in this testing scenario, let's basically check that base icon component is rendered with the default classes, unless we specify custom ones. And the first thing we usually do while testing view components is we render them. So I'm gonna use function mount to render base icon component. And additionally, I'll have to supply prop called name. So I'm using props object and supplying name of the icon. So I'm going to copy over any of these keys from the icons object, for example, icon with a name clock. And by the way, the icon name is also a custom type defined inside types.ts, which is a basic enumeration that contains all icon names available in this application. So with that, let's take a look at the render it markup of this component. I'm gonna call method HTML on the wrapper object, and let's see what we'll get in the terminal. And we are seeing the rendered markup of an icon, which is the result of the dynamic component inside base icon component. Because we have specified that we had to render icon with a name clock, and we got an SVG code of this icon. And now let's do the same, but in this case, I'm going to use shallow mount function to render the component instead of a mount. And let's check the difference. So in the example of this base icon component, we can see the difference between mount and shallow mount functions more clearly, because in the first case, while using mount function, we have received full markup of an SVG icon, but when using shallow mount function, instead of icon code, we have received component tab, because dynamic component in this case is a child component of base icon component and while using shallow mount function, child components are not rendered. Instead, they are replaced with such stops. But since in this case we are testing icon components in isolation, we don't have to render child components, so we can go with shallow mount function, because in here we only have to check that this default class H8 is present on the dynamic component. This way we're gonna make sure that we are always gonna get this default class unless we will specify custom class attribute. So let's write our first expectation. I'm gonna call method classes to get the list of classes of this component and check if this list of classes contains H8 class, which is the default one for the icon. I'm also going to print out the full list of classes of an icon in the terminal, and here we go, we have received 
the default class and the test has passed. In the next testing scenario, I'm going to check that we can supply additional set of classes. So basically, that we can overwrite default class while using base icon component. So in this testing scenario, we're going to check this part of the implementation, which allows us to specify additional classes from outside while using this component. An example of using this component when supplying custom classes can be found inside the logo component. In here, base icon component is used with the custom class. So let's get back to our test. Copy over the code needed to render the component from the previous test. But in this case, additionally, I'll have to supply class attribute. And the way we supply attributes for view components is by using author's key. Here we also use an object notation where keys are attribute names. In this case, we're specifying only one attribute called class with a set of arbitrary classes that we are going to check that they have been assigned to the icon. So now let's use the same set of classes in our assertion. I'm going to use to be method to check equality. But if we leave everything as this, the test is going to throw an error because the classes method returns an array of classes and we are comparing it with a string. So we firstly have to convert this array into a string. I'm gonna do it by calling method join and join every element of the array by using a space, like so. And finally, the test is passing. Now I'm going to extract this set of classes into a separate constant to not repeat it twice, and then reference this constant while passing class attribute here and in the expectation right here. But as I have already said before that for these two tests, we can also use shallow mount function instead of a mount and everything will work just fine. So I'm gonna replace mount function with shallow mount in both tests. And this way we're kind of testing base icon component in isolation without rendering any of its children. And now out of curiosity, let's take a look at the markup that we got after calling function shallow mount. I'm gonna add a print statement and print HTML markup of this component. And since this dynamic component used inside base icon component is child component, that is why while calling shallow mount function, this child component has not been rendered. It was replaced with this step. But what we are interested in is that this step will contain necessary classes that we have specified from outside. So that is why the test is still passing, because we are only testing that this component contains necessary classes and we are not checking anything in particular related to markup. But if we'll go ahead and inside base icon component, remove, for example, this part, which allows us to specify classes from outside, test is going to tell us about it, that now we no longer are able to specify classes for the base icon component from outside. So we have these extra guarantees that cover this case, and we will not remove this part by accident. And also it is a good practice to run all tests in the project from time to time after writing new tests, so I'm gonna do just that right now. Let's press A to run all tests in the project. All of them are passing. Let's continue in the next lesson.